Now that we've learned several different integration techniques, we want to talk about our overall strategy for integration. Um, what is it that we should be thinking about when we're trying to choose uh, which technique might be most appropriate? So we want to just start by reminding ourselves what the different integration techniques that we now know are. So we have our basic integration rules. That's all the different um, antiderivative rules um, summarized on our um, basic integration rules handout. We've got um, techniques such as using a little bit of algebra to simplify something before we, before we try to apply a rule or apply a more involved technique. We have our u substitution technique. We have integration by parts. We have the techniques involved for dealing with trig integrals, which often involves some trig identities and some u-substitution. We have the trig substitution method. And we also have our partial fraction decomposition technique, which is useful in particular for taking integrals of rational functions. Okay, so these are the different techniques that we have at our disposal. So let's just go through um, a broad strategy here of what we want to be thinking about when we're trying to evaluate an integral. So given some integral, we want to think about what kind of simplification we can do. Is there some sort of algebra or are there some sort of trig identities we can introduce? And then before we start to um, think through our more involved techniques, Besides trying to realize, is there actually an antiderivative rule that applies, we want to look for some kind of clear um, substitution. So an obvious substitution might occur in something like the integral of, um, let's say, x sine of x squared dx, okay, where the obvious substitution would be to let u be x squared, since du would then be 2x dx, and I have that x dx part outside. So we want to see, is there some sort of clear substitution to use? If there isn't, okay, then we start thinking about classifying the integral type. Um, and this is where it helps to think about sort of the different patterns, ways that the integral looks um, when we're using these different techniques. So um, ask yourself, is what I'm dealing with a trig integral? Is it an integral of some product of trig functions? Well, in that case, we want to think about using some trig identities and the various techniques that we learned back in section 7.2. Um, if it's not trig functions, um, but maybe it's actually a rational function, remember that's a polynomial divided by a polynomial, then we can think about whether it's a proper rational function or if it's improper. If it's improper, we can do long division. If it's proper, we can think about trying to use partial fraction decomposition which we've just been talking about in section 7.4. So what other kinds of types might we have? Well, it might be some sort of product of two different kinds of functions, maybe an integral of x e to the x, x sine x, x log x, something like log x squared, arc sine x, x arc tan x, e to the x sine x. All of these are different examples of products of two different kinds of functions. So if you're in one of those kinds of situations, then you're going to want to use integration by parts. Remember, our integration by parts technique is useful for taking integrals of products of functions. And just to remind ourselves that when we're trying to choose what to let be u and dv when we use integration by parts, we use that ILATE guideline. So that's our, our priority for choosing u is following along here from left to right. So we would use um, an inverse trig function for u first over a log function, over an algebraic, over a trig function, and over an, out, um, an exponential function. Okay, so this just helps us sort of pick what we want to use for our u um, in an integration by parts, with the general idea for picking u and dv being that we would like u to be something that becomes simpler when being um, differentiated, if possible. But we also want to make sure we don't leave dv to be something that's hard to integrate. So we want to make sure dv is relatively easy to integrate, and hopefully u becomes a little bit simpler. So what else can we have for types? Well, another type that we've seen an example of is situations where I have an integral involving some roots. Okay. So in cases where we had a quadratic under a root, that's when we had things like x squared minus a squared, 
a squared minus x squared or x squared plus a squared, something like that, or something where we could complete the square first if needed, um, we would try trig substitution on those types. Um, if we have um, a root, but it's not a quadratic under a root, then maybe we can try to do some kind of substitution to turn it into a rational function. Um, like we saw in an example before where I had the square root of 1 plus root x over x that I was trying to integrate. We saw we were able to do a substitution on that and turn it into a rational function back in one of the 7.4 um, videos. So we want to just keep that technique in mind as well. Okay. And of course, many times when you're working on these problems, you just have to try again. Maybe the first approach that you try doesn't work out for you, so then you go back and try a different approach. So, you know, sometimes on these problems it might take you several pieces of paper, try a couple different approaches as you're practicing, um, seeing what integration techniques are going to work best. Okay. Um, in addition, you may be using several integration techniques within one problem. So you may start with um, a use substitution and then use trig substitution. Um, you may start with integration by parts and then you do substitution or then use trig substitution. Um, you could have any uh, variety of combinations of these techniques in the problems as well. Okay. And this is just kind of giving you a broad strategy about what to try first and how to classify your different integrals. But really the best way to get better at choosing the most appropriate technique is through lots of practice. So let's look at a couple of examples where we can think about what strategy um, would be best to apply. So in the following examples, we're going to be focusing on identifying the technique we want to use, maybe doing a little bit of simplifying first, but not doing a full evaluation of the integral. So in our first example, I have the integral of 4x e to the 5x dx. So I think about sort of following my strategy. Um, there's not an obvious substitution to do here, or any algebraic simplification to do, but when I think about classifying it, I realize that I do have two different types of functions here being multiplied together. I have 4x, or I could even pull that 4 out in front, so I'm looking at x e to the 5x dx. So what I've got is an algebraic kind of function times an exponential function. So the thing to do here would be to use integration by parts with u equal to x and dv equal to e to the 5x dx. Okay, so whenever we're going to have something like that, x times some different kind of function, um, we're probably going to be thinking about integration by parts, unless maybe what that exponent is of e um, is something whose derivative is x, for example. Okay, so what about this next example? Here I have an integral of log x all over x times the square root of 1 plus log x squared dx. So thinking about my strategy, um, there's no algebra for me to use to simplify this and there's not a rule, but I do see a substitution that I could use to at least get started. So notice I've got a log x up here and a log x inside um, the parentheses here being squared. And I know that the derivative of log x is 1 over x, and I'm noticing an x in the denominator here. So we would try to use u substitution first and say, okay, u is log x, so my du is 1 over x dx. So this gives me u and then the square root of 1 plus u squared. And then I notice that this dx over x piece, well, that's my du. Okay. So that simplified um, this for me here. This allows me to see that actually I could, have, could do a second substitution on this. Um, I see that I have 1 plus u squared under the square root, so I might think about a trig sub. But because I have a u in the numerator here, and the derivative of 1 plus u squared would be 2u du, I would use another substitution. So sometimes um, a full substitution might not be obvious to you to begin with, but if you do a single substitution, you might be able to simplify things so you can recognize um, what's going to be most helpful for that next step. Okay. So notice 
that I could write, rewrite this now as 1 half dw all over a square root of w. Okay, So we want to think about substitutions in a lot of these problems, sometimes as an initial technique and sometimes as the only technique that we're going to need. And what about this next example? I've got an integral of x cubed over the square root of 64 minus x squared. So just to compare it to what we had above, I do have something over a square root of something, which is what I had here, but it's a little different situation as u substitution will not help me in this example number three, because instead of just having x, excuse me, in the numerator, I have x cubed. So now we think about one of our other techniques. Well, I do have a quadratic under a square root, so I'd want to think about using trig substitution here. So I'd let x be, well this is some number squared minus x squared, so this is like an a squared minus x squared form. So a sine substitution is going to be helpful here. I'd want to do um, x equals 8 sine theta, my dx would be 8 cosine theta, d theta. And then I'd rewrite that in terms of thetas and look at using identities and things for my next steps. Okay, so what about example 4 here? So I have an integral of tan squared x plus 1 all over tan x. So I know initially I want to think about is there some kind of simplification that I can do? Well I notice I have a sum in the numerator and then just a single denominator. So I could think about taking each term in my numerator and dividing by that denominator. So this could really simplify what I have to look at. So notice that this is going to be the integral of tan x plus cotangent x, and we have antiderivative rules for each of those. So sometimes it takes doing a little bit of simplification to recognize what rules we have. So this turns out to be log of the absolute value of secant x plus log of the absolute value of sine x plus c. Okay, so we were able to evaluate that one completely. But you want to often think about um, simplification as a step that you might need to use. And you know that something like this example here could have come up as a later step in some more initially involved um, integral. So you always want to think about simplification as a possible step in your work. Okay, so we have two more examples just to help us think about our strategy. Notice that at number five I don't have any kinds of trig functions. It's all powers of x. Um, and it's not really a product of two different kinds of functions, it's just this single fraction here where I do have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So in terms of classifying this, this is a rational function and it's also proper. I have degree 2 in the numerator and degree 3 in the denominator. So this is a case where we'd want to use partial fractions to write that as a sum of some simpler fractions and then integrate each one of those. Will we want to do that right away? Well, we'd want to think about whether this um, quadratic here could be factored or not. So if we wanted to do a quick check of that, I could do b squared minus 4ac here. Looks like b is 4, so I'd have 16 minus 4 times 1 times 8. Well, that's going to be 16 minus 32. So that's definitely going to be less than zero. So this part is an irreducible quadratic when we would go on to do partial fractions on that piece. So as soon as you see something that's a rational function, you definitely want to be thinking about using partial fractions unless there's some um, obvious substitution that, that could help you simplify it. So in our last example, I have something that does have some trig functions involved. I have this integral of cosine to the fifth x sine to the fourth x over 1 minus sine squared x dx. So I'd like to simplify this first. I always want to think about doing simplification as an easier step. Notice I see this 1 minus sine squared. Well, I know 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So if I have cosine to the fifth x, sine to the fourth x all over cosine squared x. Notice that this simplifies to cosine cubed x 
si times sine to the fourth x. And so now I do have one of those trig integral types where I have this odd power of cosine. So I want to follow the technique where I would pull off a cosine and then rewrite the other cosines in terms of sines and use a u substitution. Okay, so this gives us an opportunity to review all the different techniques that we have so far, as well as thinking about which technique is best to use when.